What's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna discuss the difference between simple interest and compound interest, and I'm gonna illustrate those differences through an example. So let's say you have $500, and you're going to invest it for three years at 7% per year. Now let's say that you invested at simple interest. So in year zero, which is like right now, you're gonna start off with $500. You're going to put $500 into a bank account. That's gonna pay you 7% simple interest per year. Now this $500 that you put in, it's also called your principal amount. So it's basically the amount that you are starting with or the amount that you put in of your own money. Now what's going to happen during that first year? Well, that $500 you put in is going to earn interest and it's going to earn 7% interest. And to figure out that amount, you would just take your 500 and multiply it by 0 0.07, which is the decimal amount of 7%. And you would get $35. So that first year, your $500 is making you $35 worth of interest. So at the end of one year, your bank account is going to have $535. Your $500 principal plus the $35 interest that you made throughout the year. Now what's going to happen in the second year? Well, because we're dealing with simple interest, the interest amount is going to be the same throughout all the years. It's always based on that principal amount. So in the second year, you're also going to make that same amount of $35 worth of interest. So the 535 that you had at the end of the first year, well at the end of the at the end of the second year, it's going to be 570, basically 535 plus that 35 of interest in the second year. And then similarly in the third year, you'll also make $35 worth of interest, so 570 plus that 35 and you get a final amount of $605 at the end of year three. So if you wanna make a definition for simple interest, it's basically the interest earned only on that principal amount. Because notice this $35 interest that we earned every year was based on that initial $500 that we put into the bank account. And then doing a little summary of our scenario, so we start off with $500. We said that it's called the principal, but a common term that you're gonna start seeing in this course a lot is present value. So let's use that instead. The present value that you had was $500. And then that $500 over three years, it grew to $605. So that was our future value. So over that three years, the interest that you earned was $105, which is basically the difference between the future value and the present value. Now let's say in addition to this scenario, I ask you how much do you have at the end of 20 years? So obviously it would be a lot of work to redraw this for 20 years and keep adding the $35 every time. Is there a way that maybe we can put this scenario into a formula that would make it easier for us to calculate future values for larger periods of time? And the answer is yes, we can make a formula. So this is the formula right here. Basically the future value of an investment is equal to the present value times in brackets one plus RT where R is the interest rate per period, and that's in decimals, and T is the number of periods. So this formula here represents the future value of an investment with simple interest. Make a note of that, this is only for simple interest. So going back to our original question, can we figure out the future value of $500 after 20 years? Well, we can using this formula. So. The present value, the amount that we invested, is still this $500. And then in brackets, we got one plus <clears throat> the interest rate per period. In this case, the periods are in years. It's 7%, so that would be 0 0.07 times the number of periods. We're doing it for 20 years. So that would be 20 there. And all of that would be within the bracket. So then simplifying that bracket, make sure that you're doing the proper bed math. So you gotta be multiplying these two amounts first. So 0 0.07 times 20 gives you 1.4. And then adding one, you get 2.4. And then 500 times 2.4, you would get a future value of 1,200. So if you took $500 as your present value and invested 
at 7% simple interest for 20 years, you would end up with a future value of $1,200. So then putting a summary of that scenario, present value is 500, future value is 1200. That means that interest that you earned during that 20 years was the difference between the future value and the present value, which is $700. And I would highly recommend when you're doing these questions, making a little summary like this for all of them until you start getting comfortable with the time value of money because these summaries are going to be especially useful when we get into more complex questions dealing with loans and mortgages and stuff like that. Now let's say instead of simple interest, you're going to invest that $500 for three years at 7% compounded interest. What's the difference going to be? Well, in year zero, you're still going to start off with that present value amount of $500. And in the first year, you're still going to make that same interest of $35 because it's going to be based in the first year on the amount that you invested. So 500 times 0.07 is 35. So we would add that $35 interest to that present value. And at the end of the first year, we have $535 in the bank account, which is the same amount that we had when we invested at simple interest. However, the years after that, it's going to be a little different. So now in the second year, unlike simple interest where you're making $35 worth of interest every year, in the second year, the amount of interest you're gonna make is gonna be based on the new amount in the bank account of $535. So you would take that $535 and multiply it by 7%, and you would get 37.45, so $37.45. So that would be the interest that you earn, 37.45 interest in the second year. So when you add that 37.45 of interest to that initial bank balance and after the first year of 535, you would get a new bank balance of 572.45 at the end of the second year. So notice what happened here. The initial $500, it earned $35 worth of interest in the first year. And then for the second year, you earn interest not only on that initial $500 again, but you also earn interest on that $35 worth of interest that you earned in the first year. So it's like interest on interest, hence the name compound interest, which is what that means. Interest is compounding on top of each other. So at the end of the second year, you end up with $572.45 instead of $570, which would only be based on that principal amount. But because you're making interest on interest in this bank account, you end up with a little bit more at the end of the second year versus this one. And then similarly in the third year, you would make 7% on that new amount in the bank after two years. So 572.45 times 0 0.07 gives us $40.07 worth of interest in that third year. So if you take 572.45 and add that new $40.07 worth of interest earned in the third year, at the end of three years, you would end up with $612.52. And notice how this amount compares or is larger than the $605 because again, you're earning interest on interest along with your principal. So to make a little definition for compound interest is basically the interest earned on principal and interest reinvested from previous periods. So simple interest was only interest earned on the principal. Compound interest is earned on both the principal and the interest from previous periods, hence why we get larger future values. So making a little summary of this scenario, present value, we started off with $500, which is what we invested. We ended up with $612.52 at the end of three years. So that's our future value. So the interest that we earn over that period of three years is the difference between the future value and the present value, which is $112.52. Now, similarly, as we did in this example, what if I ask you the future value of the $500 at 7% compounded interest after 20 years? 
well, it's going to be a lot of work to keep redoing these calculations for 20 years, so is there a general formula that we can put this scenario in to calculate it for larger time periods? And the answer is yes, we can. We can put it in this formula. This is the formula for the future value of an investment with compound interest. So future value equals the present value bracket 1 plus r close bracket to the power of t. And notice how it's different than the simple interest formula. Here we had the r and the t multiplied. Here it's 1 plus r in the bracket and it's to the power of t. So taking this scenario for 20 years we would have $500 which is the present value 1 plus 0 0.07 which is the interest rate in decimals to the power of 20 which is the number of periods, in this case 20 years. So we would work with the bracket first, so we would add the 1 and the 0 0.07, so that would just be 1.07 to the power of 20. So then taking the 1.07 and taking it to the power of 20, we would get 3.8697. Now make sure you don't multiply the 500 and the 1.07 first. You have to do bed mass, exponents come first. So then multiplying those two numbers, we would end up with $1,934.84. So that is the future value for a $500 investment that we invested at 7% compounded interest per year for 20 years. So then making a summary of this scenario, present value is $500, the future value is $1,934.84, so the interest we earned over those 20 years was $1,434.84. And notice how much bigger that interest amount is than this interest here of $700 when we did it with simple interest. So after three years, maybe the interest amounts weren't as uh, big of a difference, only a couple dollars. This was 105, this was 112.52. But as you increase the time horizons, the difference between simple interest and compound interest starts to get larger and larger, as you can see between these amounts. So yeah, anyway, a couple of examples just illustrating simple interest and compound interest and their differences. Uh, make sure you write down these formulas because you will be using them. Usually questions may ask you what's the difference that you have in your bank account at the end of 20 years if you invest with a simple interest versus compound interest. In that case you would just take this amount and subtract it from this amount. So the difference would be $734.84. Another point I want to make is whenever you get a question that doesn't specify whether you're using simple interest or compound interest. So it would just say you're investing $500 for three years at 7% interest. Always assume that they're talking about compound interest. So basically for something to be in simple interest terms, the question should state it specifically that it's earning simple interest. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.